to the EFED podcast, the podcast exploring our fantasy wrestling hobby, where the wrestling is written, but the characters are real. All right, guys, welcome back to another edition of the EFED podcast. I'm so excited you're listening. I'm so excited to be back for another episode. Brian, welcome back. My co-host, producer, the man that uh, I do business with. How's it going? It is going swimmingly, sir. How are you? I'm doing great, buddy. Um, Clanging and banging, dude. But, uh, <laughs> we're doing awesome some audio humor. tests and having some fun. It was it was a good time. So I'm having a great time. I'm excited to bring you guys another interview, another spotlight, another question of the week, another episode of the, of the EFED podcast. Some fun news, some fun notes, and maybe some possibilities. We're going to talk about that and much, much more. I'm excited to uh, dive in. Brian? Episode 74, it's been a long time. We're doing the bi-weekly stuff. Honestly, it's a lot easier on our schedules, and we're able to produce some more fun stuff. So It's good stuff. Uh, it's, it's made things a lot easier. It's made it easy to put a lot more production value into things. And if, if you haven't heard that, then, well, the hell with you. <laughs> You're going to hear it today. We're going to talk to John Thompson, the handler behind TW Combat. Tom Johnson. Tom Johnson. No, John Thompson, a former uh, sponsor on the show. We're going to discuss e-fetting, E-M-M-A, Emma. and the differences between the two and much, much more. John's a great guy, and he's always putting fun questions in the Discord chat for the uh, next interview guest. So appreciate that, too. Valued member of the eFed podcast, Discord. And if you're not at that Discord, do you even know? what proper discourse is. (laughs) You can find it over at twitter.com slash the EFED podcast in the profile. We've got the link to the discord. You can find it. Well, if you just hit me up in the DMS, if you can't find my profile, which is kind of redundant, but we'll give it to you there too. Otherwise guys, you can also check us out right here on Spotify, on Apple, on Google play, wherever you listen to your podcast, you're going to find the EFED podcast. You know what's pretty cool, Brian? Uh, I have started traveling again recently for work. And interestingly enough, I got to meet more eFetters. And if you don't know, in the Discord section, there is a hashtag Mikey Meets eWrestling tab. You met Tony Khan. (laughs) No, I met Tony. We're going to talk about it. I was traveling to San Antonio, got to meet my buddy Tony. Uh, He's a. He's not only a member of the Patreon, but he's been a longtime Discord member, and he's a good friend. I uh, got to meet Tony and hang out with him. We got to we got to have a nice little date when we walked the uh, the, the San Antonio Riverwalk and had a nice meal together. So no, shout out to Tony. Had a good time. Had a couple of beers together. He's a good guy. It's very sweet. It's very sweet. Very romantic. See, not only do you get you get video interviews at Patreon, you might get to meet Mikey now. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, folks. We're not giving that away. That just that's a by uh, happenstance chance. Well, kind of I mean, hold on. You say you might get to. I think it's more accurately said you might have to. You might have to. <laughs> that's right. And then not only that, Brian, but recently I met Brock, another member of the Patreon, oh, and another supporter gosh. of the show. Brian Brock is also from the same state I am, so we decided, hey, let's meet up halfway in between, and we shared a couple of beverages as well, ice cold and slightly alcoholic oh but we we went to a brewery and had a good time so shout out, shout out to brock enjoyed uh, his company as well and lesnar had right? a good time yeah brock lesnar and tony khan yes and Shawn michaels oh i went to san antonio solely to super kick Shawn michaels and tell him the bret hart but stuff. instead you got super kicked that's that's why we are bi-weekly now folks his jaw had to heal <laughs> I got super kicked by the sun because it was 107 degrees all the time. (laughs) So San Antonio was great. It was beautiful. It was way too hot for me. I'll stay. I'll stay in Ohio. Geographical oddity. And today on the spotlight, it's my fed, Brian, classic-wrestling.com. I'm excited to bring you a little bit more info. And actually, we are recruiting a little bit. We're looking for two singles and two tag teams. We've got a couple openings. I'm excited to bring you some more info and insight on classic-wrestling.com. Dot com. I mean, to be fair, Mikey, aren't we all looking for a couple singles for some tag teams? Hey, <laughs> hey I see what you did there. I like it. Okay. Uh, 
Brian, I'm sorry. Classic Wrestling is joining the uh, sponsorship here on the program. You don't say. That uh, Defiance has been enjoying for some time. Do you mean to tell me <laughs> that you've had podcast might be a bit self-serving? A little bit self-serving. So we're going to talk about that much, much more today. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. The question of the week, Brian, this week, I want to hear your answer. Other than e-wrestling, what are your other favorite hobbies? First and foremost, drinking. <laughs> Fair. Uh, and music. I, you know, For those who don't know, and if you don't know, don't go check it out. Uh, I do a little bit of music. <laughs> you catch us at swordgang.com. I'll take you over to... Uh, dot com. Dot com. Take you over to Bandcamp currently, because uh, there's no need for a website. Who goes to those? <laughs> well, check out Savage Souls. Uh, on Spotify as well. Indeed. Not as much up there. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you do that, you like it, uh, definitely check out YouTube. There's much more up there. Mixtapes and videos and etc. Th- things that we can't put on Spotify legally. But uh, yeah. <laughs> much like uh, Mikey and Likey's theme song, Impious Pie. That's right. Great song. You can check that up on YouTube. And it's mentioned mentioned many times in Defiance. <laughs> Many times, many times. Sometimes I worry about the search results. Like, is it, is this going to link people to my uh, to my song or to a Mikey Unlikely <laughs> appearance? <laughs> well, very good. How about you, sir? Uh, hobbies for me. Uh, most recently, soccer coach. That's been a fun one. Um, fixing up uh, the house. Uh, what else are hobbies of mine? That's not a hobby. That's a chore. Playing video games. A uh, big fan of Madden, big fan of, you know, a bunch of Fallout and Skyrim and just, I don't know, fun games. Disc golf, uh, podcasting. I love doing this. I love recording. I love doing all this fun stuff. And, you know, we're going to see where all of this stuff leads us. Brian, we're going to have some fun with it. And we're already having fun over at patreon.com slash efed podcast. Dot com slash efed podcast. We got some video interviews up there. And unfortunately, a couple of the recent guests have not been interested in doing the video. And that's fine. We understand. John Thompson also uh, did a pass. But we're going to talk to him here today and have some fun. You can't see him. But it's a long time coming. You got to love hearing from John Thompson, a.k.a. Tom Johnson. A.k.a. Mr. What's your biggest disappointment in e-wrestling? A.k.a. Mr. What's your biggest accomplishment in e-wrestling? And then the weird question. All right, guys, we're going to give a shout out to our sponsors first. We want to give a shout out to DefianceWrestling.com. Duck up. Uh, Classic Dash Wrestling.com. Duck up. If you're looking for a micro role play fed, we've also got OCWFed.com. Check them out. Duck up. And of course, Power to the Smarks. Check it out. It's a great community run by Alex Smiley. Not only do they do podcasts, do they do live uh, reviews. He's got some YouTube stuff that's a lot of fun, and they've got a fun Discord you can check out as well. Uh, you can also talk to Alex in my Discord at the EFED Podcast. You can check it out on the profile, twitter.com slash the EFED Podcast. Brian, let's get into the show. The EFED Podcast is a totally free podcast that drops each and every single week for your e wrestling ears on a multitude of apps. If you'd like to support the show, however, the best way to do so is over at patreon.com slash efedpodcast. For as little as $3 a month, you can support both Brian and myself as we crank out more e-wrestling content with perks such as early releases and special Discord designations. And if that's not enough EW action for you, jump up to the $10 a month tier and you can get a free EWT's t-shirt design early and ad-free editions of the show as well as access to our monthly Q&As, bad graps, and more. And if you'd like to be a sponsor on the show and get your ad played, the best way to do that is the sponsor level on Patreon with all of the previous perks plus weekly commercials on the show. Check it out over at patreon.com slash efedpodcast. We greatly appreciate your consideration. Occupy Pro Wrestling, putting the smart back into smart mark since 2012 the community on Discord and message boards, merchandise, a weekly vodcast on Twitch, and much more. Check out everything from us and our site partners at OccupyProWrestling.com. 
eFed Tees, the number one source for eFed merchandise, offering custom merchandise made for your wrestler, tag team, stable, or eFed. Whether you want a high quality t shirt, face mask, hoodie, hat, it doesn't matter. We can help you out over at eFedTees.com. Do you have a custom logo for your wrestler? Awesome. We're going to slap it on a shirt and help you out real fast. If not, no problem at all. We have a custom design service too. You can work with a graphic artist to get the perfect design made for your character. Go on over to EWTs.com and click on Want a Shirt to get your shirt started. EFEDTees.com. For over a decade, Defiance Wrestling has redefined what an EFED can be. An angle fed with a rich history and a colorful cast of characters, Defiance Wrestling offers a drama free environment with some of the most experienced and talented writers in the history of the game with a level of consistency that few other promotions can offer. With on time events, micro offerings, and even a long form in character radio show, as well as a forum home on the classic FWrestling.com, nobody, I said it, nobody does fantasy wrestling quite like Defiance. Come see what all the buzz is about. Come check out DefianceWrestling.com. You heard me. It's DefianceWrestling.com. I'll see you there. Up next is the EFED Spotlight segment where we highlight a Fed that's out there, tell you a little bit about them, and see if it's a good fit for you. And Brian, today on the show, we got the Fed head of the Fed we're talking about. Who? It's me. Oh, oh, oh shit. Classic wrestling question mark? That's right. Classic wrestling.com. Dot com. We'll help you find the website. Uh, you can jump in the Discord from there as well. Let us know. If you're interested in joining, you can read the rules. You can check out the Fed. It's a micro RP Fed. We're going to talk about it right now. Slow down. Slow down. Hey, we'll get there. As I used to say, we'll get there. (laughs) So first and foremost, sir, how does this Fed operate? Fed operates on a micro role play status. We'll get more to what that means as we go down. You already answered this is a role play Fed versus an angle. Yes, sir. What What do you mean by micro? Well, by micro, I mean that it's a low commitment, uh, seven hundred and fifty word role play Ooh. style. So you're only going to write one promo per match, seven hundred fifty words, and uh, you're going to have fun doing it because Brian, it's a kind of a wild fed with a wild concept. But we'll get there as well. Apparently, a part of the rules is you'll have fun doing it. Damn it, you will. <laughs> <laughs> you will have fun, or you will get out. No, I'm kidding. All right. So how often? Uh, does classic dash wrestling.com have shows and or pay-per-view every television show is once every two weeks mm-hmm. and then we do a uh, pay-per-view every sixth or seventh week in that schedule so truly bi-weekly yeah on five a, show on a, bi- on a bi-weekly schedule um we're looking at a pay-per-view every fourth or fifth month yep so we're keeping it pretty low commitment pretty easy to handle and if you can write 750 words in a month, I think it's going to be a good fit for you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good solid schedule for the mean average of age range that currently populates EFEDs. Absolutely. And people enjoy the easy schedule and it makes it easy to commit to something that, hey, you only got to do it you know, every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you've only got time for one, that gives you the time. If you've got time for many, that still gives you the time. That's right. So next up on the chopping block, please, sir, enlighten us. What active championships are there at Classic-Wrestling.com? Dot com. So active championships, of course, we're going to have the real world's champion. Oh. Uh, That will be crowned here at the end of our current ongoing tournament. Uh, We've made it to the second round, moved on in the tournament that I'm excited to talk about. Let me check out my list here. We've got all business Alex Bruder. He's been uh, very surprising. He's a guy who hasn't been role-playing for the last, I don't know, at least 10, 15 years. And uh, he's finally come back to e-fighting through the e-fed podcast. Bring him back. So excited. The former Flying Frenchie. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so he's over there as well. We've got uh, Dash Daxon, one of my favorite characters over there. Uh, I guess that's kind of a little bit biased, but 
Dash is a uh, time traveler. He's from the future. He's got a little <laughs> robot that follows him around called Hello World. So he's a lot of fun. I hate everything about that. <laughs> you gotta love <laughs> Double Decker, the bus, honk, honk. <laughs> he is a man who believes he is a bus. Excited to bring him to the big screen. Flying Freddy Kilgore, of course. It's Joe. He's fired. Oh, you're definitely fired now, Joe. Feral, feral Freddy Kilgore. Sorry, Joe, we're drinking. Feral Freddy Kilgore. Hey, whether he be feral or flying, he be fired. <laughs> he be fired. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we've also got Harry Chest. That's good old Ross. Ross, you're fired. Ross is fired. Brian's least favorite character. We'll talk about that <laughs> off air, Ross. <laughs> King Kong Frank. We've got Lord Colossus. I'm just running through the roster now Is at this point. We got, we've got Ricky Rocks. <laughs> we've got uh, Rush Starling, Shujin Yama, Smash Mouth and Break, Next Twisted Steel, the tag team, and Vito Valentino. We've got a good bunch oh. of wrestlers and many more over at Classic Dash Wrestling. Dot com. Dot com. And if you're in Defiance Wrestling, you're fired. Dot com. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Well, you got a home over here. All right. All right. So uh, hit us real quick with that Twitter link. There is no Twitter link. Classic dash wrestling dot com. So the gimmick is we're going to cover it now, Brian. This is what sets us apart because Ooh. it's kind of what sets the entire Fed apart. We are based on 1980s wrestling, whether it be NWA, the WWF territories, Memphis, the South, Texas, whatever. We are doing old school wrestling studio style on television nice. and pay per view style in bigger arenas. We're having fun doing it. Everything is micro, 750 words. We've got the big characters, the giants from the uh, old school. We've got seven footers. We've got high flyers. We've got rock stars. We've got cowboys. We've got Rosses. everything you could think of. Ross with a superhero gimmick. It's so much fun. So the matches are micro, the role plays are micro, the segments are micro. Everything is 750 words or less. You're going to have a fun time. We're going to tell some fun stories. And there, it's very challenging, I've found, to get your entire role play, your promo, your setting, everything into 750 words. And it's really amazing what some of these guys are pulling out in this world title tournament. Dare I say it is quality over quantity. It is quality over quantity, absolutely. And like I said, it's a bi-weekly fed. The commitment is low. It's a great time with a lot of great experienced handlers and some guys who are coming back to e-wrestling, which is interesting. They're telling good stories. You love to see it, Christy. You love to see it. And check out the new website, classic-wrestling.com. Shout out to Shut Solex, up. my guy. He's building the website. He's taking good care of us, and he's doing some really, really cool shit and giving us the nice retro look that we're going for. Indeed, indeed. I mean, check out the website for sure. I saw it today. And if you pull that website up and don't automatically have visions of Max head, Headroom, then I don't know what's <laughs> going on with your life. That's right. It's a good time and a cool website. And we got a lot of stuff that's uh, really fun. We're not just your normal board fed. No offense to those guys, but we've got the full on website. We've got the role plays on the site. We've got original character art and much, much more. Unlike any Fed you've been a part Custom of. Custom backstage. Custom backstage. It's a great time. And uh, just to wrap it up, just so I make sure I hit all the marks in the, the questions here. Uh, you mentioned you're looking for a couple singles, maybe some tag teams. What is your current roster member counts? So singles right now, we're at 20 people. Um, we're booking about six matches per show. So I might, I might need one or two more. Uh, but as far as tag teams go, we've got four tag teams, so that's eight more wrestlers. And I'm looking for one or two more tag teams to fill out that division and get those titles going. There you go. So if you are a current or even maybe a lapsed RP fan uh, and you got a buddy, team up. Team up. It's one role play, 750 words between two people. How many words is that, Brian? 375? I, I don't maths. That's right. 375. Okay. <laughs> that works for me. So check it out, guys. Classic-wrestling.com. I'm the Fed Head. We got a fun staff there. We got a fun group of handlers and uh, some really interesting, fun characters. So 
check out the role plays if nothing else. Hundred percent. I um, you know, I'm not a big role play fan, but I've been keeping it a little bit, given that there is a vested interest in that. I don't hate Mikey, and I hate everyone. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, I've, I've been uh, I've, I've been checking out a little bit of the stuff. The website is incredible. Uh, the and back- shout out to Brian. You've been helping us with some graphics as well. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit until Solex went redesigned it all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> much more power to him uh but now uh yeah the site looks great and uh the oh the artwork i think you gotta touch on the artwork the artwork is a, is a blast it's a lot of fun and it's uh original i don't think there's any other feds out there using the same artwork that we're using i don't think so at all it's very unique it's uh it stands out it fits the 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 motif the motif Ooh, ooh, that's a 10 cent word good good word <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I, I say I, I'm, I despise role play, but I've been keeping up a little bit because 750 words is easy to read, and it, it's uh, it is. what I see yeah. over there. It's a good time. It's good reads. I like it. Yeah, it's easy to read. You're done with. You're done reading a role play in five minutes. It's it's yeah. great. It, it, it's great. I, I like it, except for anyone who's in defiance is over there. You're all dead to me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> classic dash wrestling dot com. That's the spotlight of the week, folks. If you don't check it out, I mean what. What are you really doing with your life? What are you waiting for? All right, everybody, it's time for the EFED podcast question of the bye week. Bye week? Why buy a vow when you can buy a week? Amen. The bye week, we're going to cover it here. This this bye week's question of the bye. Okay, that's enough. Other than (laughs) e-wrestling, what are your other favorite hobbies? I think it's an interesting question. We're going to see what people think and what they do in their free time besides e-wrestling. Oh, this is we very... Unlike Rod Hall, who just does this. Well, 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 and commands an empire of Lucha Mask Emporium franchises. (laughs) Oh, I do apologize. That is correct. And he also doesn't do this at all. Hey, you don't... Yeah, yeah, you're wrong at all counts. (laughs) All counts. Okay. Moving on, we got up first on the Discord. I'm glad people are answering on the Discord, which you can find in our Twitter profile. So you can find our Twitter and our Discord over at twitter.com slash the EFED podcast. Dot com slash the EFED podcast. Brian, who's up first? He is the main man to be fired. He is fired. Freddy something or other. <laughs> Flying Freddy. Who gives a fuck? He is. <laughs> capacity. Capacity is Joe. E tennis, e swimming, and e nature walks. <laughs> See, if if you weren't fired before, I mean, you're fired now for sure. After the e nature walk, yeah, you you're fired from e nature walking. Oh, are do you have that authority? I I do I do I I I, I have the no I don't want to say that either. That's too yeah. I do. Let's just say that. <laughs> All right, up next. <laughs> up next, Bobo. Our good friend Bobby Dean. Does masturbating count as a hobby? I'm asking for a friend. It's Doozer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dooz. Uh, I don't think it counts as a hobby. Well, I, mean, maybe, I, don't know. I mean, it really depends on how often you do it, I guess. Is it a competitive hobby? Ooh, competitive masturbation. All right, we're going to move on. Is that based on length? Bobby Dean's hobbies would include video games, commenting during movies, watching other people work out, and enjoying an evening of the UFC. While masturbating. (laughs) Who doesn't enjoy an evening full of half-naked men hugging each other closely? Again, asking for a friend. It's George. While masturbating. (laughs) Check out next week's episode, episode 75, where we feature the interview with George. Oh, hey, George. Which way did he go, George? Which way did right. he go? Which way did he go? Watch out for that tree. Up next, speaking of trees, it's fuzz. <laughs> Dull as a fucking tall oak. Fuzz. Everyone is going to say video games, so I will as well. But I also enjoy long walks on the beach, deep, intimate conversations, and watching the sunrise early in the morning. While masturbating. <laughs> okay. Running joke. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of masturbating up next, it's Rossi. It's Ross. Ross Orton. Malik Garland. The master. 
of masturbation. The best there ever is. The best there ever <laughs> Verbal was. Verbal masturbation. <laughs> the, the, the best and hairiest palm there ever will be. Miley Garland. The hairiest chest. Watching football and wrestling, playing volleyball or golfing and LARPing. Just joking. Video games. <laughs> I can see Ross. I can see Ross LARPing. Oh, I can see. I can, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure what LARPing is, but he looks. He looks. He looks like a real mother LARPer. <laughs> you don't know what LARPing is? No, I do. Yeah, it's just the live action okay. role playing. Live action role playing is basically what Paul's in, invoking over at Deaf Radio. Or well, I'd say that's live audio role playing. Well, there you go. Oh, still LARPing. Live action radio playing. All right, now we're getting into some weird masturbatory stuff. Okay. Well, speaking of masturbatory, we'll uh, leave the no, no, no. we'll leave the bit we'll we'll leave the bit alone for this one. It's your favorite admin. It's Lens. Your favorite admin. That's her username. I was like, oh, well, you're just gonna skip that. Okay, no. <laughs> Bullying Brock and at Miracle Enterprises, reading, brewery and winery hopping, and volunteering while no being a great person. <laughs> all right moving forward bait and switch masterfully done uh, up next it's brock brock aka cox getting bullied by at your favorite admin <laughs> beer video games football gambling on football fantasy football Ooh. daily fantasy football Ooh. which is gambling and fantasy football <laughs> yeah. And anyone have a number for a gambling hotline? I might need it. <laughs> While masturbating. <laughs> Truth. Brock, great self-awareness, buddy. Yeah, you might uh you might want to get that in check there, bud. Uh oh. Look uh, look who's next, Brian. Oh no, it's Bobo. Back again. AKA Bobo. Booby Dean. Oh, I was supposed to ask, does reading smut count as a hobby? I was supposed to ask for a friend at your favorite admin. <laughs> <laughs> Why? No, 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 doesn't work. Doesn't work. Moving on. Up next, speaking of Lucha Mask Emporiums and doing odd things with them, it's Highlander 4H. Folks, it's everyone's favorite janitor, Ron <laughs> Hall. I wonder if he's more famous at this point for his janitor duties or his e wrestling. Honestly, I, I, I would go completely left field on that and say he's probably more famous for. Being Lucha a mask. Lucha Mask impresario. He's a underground Lucha Mask dealer. All right. <laughs> hey, you need that you need that new uh Ray Mysterio on the back channels? I got you. <laughs> I got you. Just just came out fresh. Fresh, bro. Meet me around the back of the Panera bread. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring you a sweet tea. Yeah. I got right. a sweet tea and a water and a lucha mask, bud. <laughs> All right, Ron Hall, McDonald Hall. <laughs> Reading video games and old school wrestling, football, and going to the gym. You know what? Actually, I saw a picture of Ron Hall recently, and I did not even recognize him. I believe that going to the gym. Nice. I, what I don't believe is I see no comment there uh, to the effect of buying counterfeit Bret Hart autographs. <laughs> I also don't see... I also don't see lurking in EFED chat rooms despite never being in an EFED. Yeah, where's that? Where's that, Ron? One of his favorite hobbies. Hashtag Fire Mikey. All right. <laughs> Up next. It's, oh, it's our guest of the week. It's Tom Johnson, a.k.a. John Thompson, a.k.a. a former sponsor via TW Combat. John Thompson says, I love sleeping in on Saturday and I love college football games. Word. I love not acting my age and a good barbecue. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan of Faulkner books and anything my grandma cooks. Oh, I think we're going in a direction. I'm half with him on that one. You know, smallmouth bass have got me hooked on Sunday afternoon. Hold on. Is this a damn country song? I think it is. I love good cold beer and barbecue with my fries. Mm. I also love a good loud honky tonk uh, that rocks on Friday night. We will get more into details in about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he queued it up. Nice. Up next is a former uh, guest, a, uh, a, a former Patreon exclusive that I believe we aired last week as the interview. It's the handler of zero, Mr. Fast to Nowhere. It's Andy Bloxham. Andy Bloxham, photography. Video production, running, gun range, 
travel and helping people with interior design and organizing. So that really sounds, everything before the and sounds like CIA and everything after the and sounds like cover for being an operative. <laughs> that is true. He's always traveling around. He's just like Roland in the CIA. He's like, we figured them both out. We're both going to be dead in a, in a week. He's like, look, I'll take pictures of you. I'll video you. I'm going to run. I can shoot. I travel. But, but, but don't worry about it. I'm into interior design. That's his, that's his retirement plan. <laughs> that's his cover story. Up next. Speaking of cover stories, <laughs> things that will cover your tables and you can play games on them. It's MDG. It's Warren from Modern Day Gladiators. You can check him out where? At drivethroughrpg.com. There you go. Dot com. Brian, that was a hell of a segue. <laughs> I do what I can do when I'm drinking. Warren says this should shock people, but I love board games. Oh, shit. And comics. Oh, man. I hear you, bud. I like comics, too. Board games? Yeah. I want to. I do want to play Modern Day Gladiators. We do need to... You re- should. And you should play as Mikey Unlikely, who is the newest character in the game. You're right. I should, and then throw the game. <laughs> can, you, can you do that in a game of chance and what? Anyhow, anyway. Up next, Curated Chris. Curated Chris, I collect vinyl, watch football, which is soccer, and enjoy all things Italian. Ooh. Oh, and I walk, run a lot. I'm lucky to live in a great part of England, so plenty of greenery and fresh air on my doorstep for the good of endorphins. Good old endorphins. Oh, you know, good old endorphins. Good old endorphins there in England, mate. I like that answer. I collect vinyl, and I also walk. Walk to the fridge, yeah. Walk to the fridge, you know. Walk to the car. Walk to the store. <laughs> walk to my Segway. <laughs> Speaking of Segways, up next is Twitter. Did you know that EWTs.com is the only home of Defiance Wrestling merchandise? Actual, factual Defiance merchandise? It's true. EWTs.com is your number one source for e-wrestling t-shirts and more. Design a shirt for your favorite character, tag team, or stable and sell them shits online for actual, factual money. Don't believe me? Let's ask this random woman on the street. Hey, what do you think about EWTs.com? What are you doing? I don't want to do this. I just wanted to talk to you about all the benefits of using EWTs.com. Seriously? I'm busy. I don't have time for this right now. But ordering from EWTs takes no time at all. Honey, work with me here. EWTs, come on. I don't even know what this is. What is an EWT? Well, you can also find them at EFEDTs.com. Or is it OO? Is it OOTs? This is dumb. It's not dumb. It's an amazing idea, an idea you can be a part of at home. You are dumb. You know, design shirts for your favorite character or tag team or or buy the shirt of your favorite characters. What do you mean characters? Are you a child? Only at EWTs.com. Just just check it out, please. Please close the door behind you when you leave. (sighs) Thanks for the help, babe. For more info, go to EWTs.com. Twitter side of things, we're going to hit it in the opposite direction. Brian, I'll announce it. You hit us with the answer. Up next on Twitter, up first, is Mac Bain, at Bain underscore Mac. D-N-D, Star Wars memorabilia, fishing, gaming, and target shooting. Nice little range of hobbies there. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a a slightly, and no offense, slightly nerdier version of Andy's CAA cover story. <laughs> it's like D&D. I know strategy. Star Wars. I have lasers. Fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will throw you in the sea. Gaming. I have lasers. <laughs> yeah. Target shooting. I'll murder you. I'm well, mur- we're not going to top that, folks. That's the end of this week's <laughs> question. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I've got lasers. Oh, I love that. All right. No, but uh, yeah. Wide range D&D. Star Wars, fishing, gaming, and target shooting. Yeah, a little outside, inside, inside, outside. Good stuff. All around side. Up next, Brian, it's Ruzilla at the Ruzy one. 
Through a photography and I collect certain books with my favorite being Sherlock Holmes. The older the book, the better. There you go. I, I think I think there's not, especially in this digital age, there's not, and it goes back to the vinyl collecting. And to some people, uh, Mac Bain even, Star Wars memorabilia, there's not enough uh, appreciation for old things. Yeah, I once collected every hardcover book for a certain author. Ooh. And then once I had it, I was just like, oh, it's awesome. I'm going to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> As I am with the vinyl, I got so much vinyl it's covering a whole entire room. Like, okay, now what do I do with these? Yeah, I was like, I was two bookshelves deep. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay, this is ridiculous. Speaking ridiculous, it's Malik Garland up next at Magnum G 1999. My favorite hobby is pouring myself a hot cup of comforting tea. <laughs> Sitting in my calming nook and curling up next to the fire with a good book on my Kindle paper white device. <laughs> wow, lots to unpack here. Was that was that in character? Oh, absolutely it was. Uh, you're fired, Ross. You're fired. Go away. Absolutely it was. Malik Garland is a great follow on Twitter at Magnum G1999. So much fun. I'm gonna need a real slash slash for you next time. Or a uh, a uh, fucking Oprah, Oprah parentheses, Oprah parentheses, or an ook. So, yeah, so, yeah. Give me, a, give me a solid ook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up next, Brian is Aurora Graves at LV Rebel Yell ninety four. Rebel Yell. I'm a gamer currently playing World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy fifteen, and Animal Crossing: New Horizons. My wife is on the Animal Crossing shit. Loves it. Absolutely. You know, it is, it. That's so crazy to me because I know all three of those, but not the New Horizons, but I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with Animal Crossing that it, it exists. But War, World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy have been around ever. Forever. Yeah, Forever. no shit. Forever. Forever. <laughs> Killing me, Smalls. Okay. <laughs> Up next on Twitter machine, it's Sean Hart at HW Sean Hart. I enjoy going to the gym when I can, and also enjoy going to the gun range pew, pew, to work on that aim. <laughs> pew, pow. Shoot, pop, pop. All Wait, right. Was that in character? No, I don't think so. I hope. Uh, shout out to Sean, a also host of it on another podcast for his fed. Oh, very nice. You, you, you love to see it. Love to see it. I enjoy re- listening to other Feds podcasts about their specific Fed. It's always cool when Feds can offer that little extra. I don't enjoy listening to them because I don't, but I love to hear that people do it. <laughs> Up next, Brian, it's Male Thirst Trap Lord <laughs> at Tweets by Tony 11. That's a hell of a name. <laughs> oh man, car restoration. That's nice. <laughs> Um, as soon as I get some personal expenses paid off, my neighbor Matt and I are going to put the shine back on his 325i. We want it to look like this again, which I don't. And he posted it. Yeah, he posted it below, but I needed to cut it short for our reading. Okay. But you can check it out at the EFED podcast on Twitter and in the comments of the question of the week. Ooh, little teaser. Uh, can you give us a hint, though? What is a 325i? Oh, it's a BMW. Okay, all right, all right. I mean, I knew it was a car. I just didn't know the the make. Obviously, yeah. has four has four wheels, uh, steering wheel as well. It's five wheels. Whoa, whoa, what? A five wheel? Well, it has a steering wheel, Brian. Ah, I see. I see. Up next on Twitter, it's Brett Daniels at Daniels underscore Brett. Wrestling, car collecting, and movie watching. Man, where were you when we were in Hillard, Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> we had so many wrestling cards we were just giving them away we had a whole pack of WCW 1990s just, cards we just like, sleeves Ron Hall couldn't give that shit away <laughs> yeah, we, we couldn't we couldn't get rid of them oh, oh man. man no good good shit uh, wrestling cards are cool it's cool that you can still collect and, I, and he might even be talking about the newer card games that you can like battle each other oh on baby, like that. baby so I don't know well, it, it, it'd be interesting, though, if he is, like, you know, for the tactile, like, the old school, like, uh, 
card cards because it's got to be hard, harder to find, but a smaller pool. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. even when they were mass producers, not wrestling cards were not made, you know, in that mass. At the same scale. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So up next is Kieran Crow FedX at Crow. That's Crow with an E at the end. Fed. Crow Fed streaming Jackbox with our Ruby while drinking. <laughs> I like the second part, the first part. I don't hate it. I played it a little bit with Tom Ford and I think Billy one time. It's fun stuff. I just downloaded the uh, the Jackbox stuff on my Xbox. Philip Lego is up next at Armenian Beast. Philip. Philippe. Philippe. Yeah, gaming. Paradox. Interactive games, mostly. Europa. Universe. Come on, man. Universalis. But this is the Manian Beast. He's the one who's always got the crazy names. Like, they, well, that's because he's not He's not from here, Brian. I mean, that's cool, but God, you're killing me, son. <laughs> gaming. Paradox. Interactive games, mostly. Europa. Universalis. Say it. Universalis. That. Four. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Crusader Kings. Three. Uh, swimming Olympics. Here I come. Not <laughs> yard work while listening to metal on an ancient MP3 player. Yes, beast theme. Marjorie Die is on there. Felling trees. That's a hobby, right? Sure. I don't know what felling is. Yeah. Well, when you chop down a tree, but when you chop the tree down, you have fell the tree. You fall the tree. You know what I mean? You have fallen the tree. Yeah, so felling the tr- felling a tree or felling trees is probably correct, but just sounds odd. You know, kind of like uh, I, I, we're talking out of our ass. I don't know. All right, uh, finally on Twitter, as at Akira Razor, it's Akira Razor. Ooh, and we got our first ach. Ook. Ook. O O C. Colon. <clears throat> My hobbies are like this cooking. Playing video games and exploring the University of Michigan campus area. I enjoy a good campus. I was recently on the rival of University of Michigan. I was in Ohio State's campus. Is uh, sir, awesome, sir. The Ohio State. The Ohio State. I'm sorry. I am from the Ohio. We don't. We don't need that copyright restriction. You got to say, say my name right. But the final Midwest state on the Eastern Starboard. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. All right, then, guys, that's going to wrap up the EFED podcast question of the bye week. You can check it out on Twitter at the EFED podcast. It's got a pin to the top of the profile for easy access. Hit us in that comments and we'll read your answer next show. Otherwise, you can check it out in the Discord where you got a little bit more room to answer. Get more than one tweet. You can fill in the Discord if you just click on that link in the Twitter profile. It'll get you in and answer the question of the week and we'll read it here on the air next episode. Hey, this is Max Kale from High Octane Wrestling. You're listening to the E-Fed Wrestling Podcast. All right, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the E-Fed Podcast interview series. Today, we're joined by Jay. Jay is the handler behind Alejandro Rivera, Jack Nation, Rob Jones, John Thompson, TW Combat Sports, and more. He's been in feds like the XWF, the GCC, and the UWL. I hope each and every one of you are excited to hear the interview today. Jay, how you doing today, buddy? Not too bad. What's up, Mikey? Glad to have you on. Longtime listener of the show, longtime contributor of questions to the show. Much obliged. I appreciate <laughs> the most, uh, your best accomplishment, your worst disappointment, and the weird question of the week. I mean, it could have got weirder. <laughs> but, you know, I just think of people. I, I appreciate it very much, sir. I'm glad to have you on the show finally. You're, you've been a good member of the Discord and a former uh, sponsor of the show as well. Yeah, I was thinking about figuring out how to get back in the sponsorship role, but I can't get the the president of GCC, Faison uh, Con. I can't pronounce it. Or when I was in UWL, Jay Jefferson, I was trying to get them to – Help me with sponsorships for them because to sponsor TW Combat Sports, it's really, are you really going to join it? You know? Oh, absolutely. 
So, no, much obliged, much appreciated. So, uh, thanks for being part of the community. Uh, that's no problem. I really enjoy it. You're meeting a lot of different people and catching up with some old friends. That's right. And, of course, if you want to check out the EFED Podcast community, you can do so at the Twitter, at the EFED Podcast. We've got the Discord link right there in the profile. Yeah. All right, man. <laughs> Let's talk about you. You've been an EFEDer for how long? Ah, about 2001. Oh, man. Back in the day. <laughs> Yeah, started out in a place called WWIWF. Wow, that's a lot of initials. And but before we get there, let's talk about how you got into pro wrestling. When did you become a fan? <laughs> I was probably 95. My brother, yeah, Justin, I was telling you about him. He's a couple years older than me. Okay. Him, him and my dad would always watch wrestling. And I can remember it's, uh, WCW Saturday night. <laughs> this is before Nitro went on the air. <laughs> I remember be outside with him playing. All of a sudden, you'd hear his watch alarm go off. Oh, I got to go inside. Okay, you know nobody else to play with, so you go inside, and there we are watching WCW Saturday Night, man. And <laughs> you know, just I remember watching it. Like I said, I'm nine years old. Hey, oh, Justin, what? Who's that guy? Hey, isn't that the guy who was on the video game? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I remember the first. Pay per view I watched was actually Slamboree '95. Uh, you remember that? I, Probably not. I was not a WCW guy, so no, not really. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, it was the start of the Dungeon of Doom. Oh, Kevin, there you go, Kevin Sullivan. Yeah, but then uh, yeah, like I said, I w- I would watch that with my dad. Then uh, we'd go up upstairs. Me and my brother would share room, and he turned on WWF too. Now. Yeah. He used to rent video games when we were kids, and his favorite ones to rent were the WWF Royal Rumble. You know that old <laughs> uh, Sega game? Yep. WF Raw. And I remember one time watching Raw with him, and I see Razor Ramon. And I used to like playing with him on Raw because through that music was just cool to me. Oh, you it, know? Was, it was cool, absolutely. Him and Diesel. So essentially, you know, that just went, that just went, through the years, you know, we WCW fans, WWF fans, basically yeah. WCW be going on downstairs, WWF going up, <laughs> on upstairs. Run back Shout and forth. Back. Yeah. <laughs> That's we awesome. Needed DVR. We needed DVR back then. Man. I guess. What happened? We missed out on that. Yeah. Well, very good. So you got into it back then. Talk about some of your favorite wrestlers as you were growing up. Obviously, Razor Ramon's music was cool. I, I really dug... Uh, Steve Austin, I I don't know why he, he just I guess he was just a stereotypical man. I want to be like him. I want to beat the hell out of my principal because you know he's beating up his boss, you know. <laughs> but then you know you had to enjoy the cruiserweights in WCW. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I had a, I had a few favorites. I, I didn't really I didn't really pick them until about ninety seven. You know, that's when I got really into WWF. Okay. Because uh, I remember my ma, she took us to a live event in Pittsburgh. The uh, It was called the Civic Arena back then. And that's when we seen Steve Austin, The Undertaker, Hawk and Animal. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I, I remember Billy Gunn. You remember Billy Gunn? Badass Billy Gunn. <laughs> he came right up. He came over. He started arguing with some people, you know, doing his thing. Me and my brother are yelling at him, cussing him out. He just having a good time. Same night, Georgie Animal Steel. You remember Big George Steel? Oh, yeah. Big hairy George eating the turnbuckles. Leaned his sweaty ass body over the guard row, and all the kids just kind of jumped on him. <laughs> so, we're making memories, man. Oh, yeah. No, it was. Uh, we used to love to go to those live events. They, they had one here in. Uh, Oh, I live in a place called North Huntington. Still City Wrestling. They used to bring the old ECW guys here. The franchise is from there, isn't he? Uh, franchise is over in, uh, I think it's Beaver Falls. Or Be- I know it's Beaver County. It's on the other side of Pittsburgh. Oh, that but, traitor. But he was actually at one of these shows, which was the coolest thing. And uh, I remember the first one I went to, Dude Love was advertised to be there. You know, Mick Foley, same thing. Yep. I remember you hear Mick Foley's burning in there. Damn. Music hit. That little 
back room and a sideshow pizza. He swore the roof was going to blow off because Cactus Jack showed up. <laughs> Through, throughout that, I, I just always loved wrestling. I'd watch, I'd watch WCW, WWF, but those live small regional shows, you, you can't beat them as a wrestling fan. Hard to beat it. I still love to see those. I mean, they, they haven't been going on the last couple years, but I used to love to take my little cousin to them. Nice. They're, so talk about how you found the weird, wild world of e-fetting. Ah, 2001, I was doing what everybody else was doing, looking for <laughs> uh, <laughs> looking for wrestling news. And I came across this WWIWF. Now, like, I know a lot about wrestling. Please tell me what this stood for. Uh, I believe it was Worldwide Insane Wrestling Federation. <laughs> I think that's what it was. I, rem- I I wasn't really accepted into it. You, you had these guys, and they, they had their just their own cliques. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, I was there for a bit. I think I had three matches. And then uh, went over to something called GWA. Okay. And that's where I created a character called John Rogan. Yes, I stole the name off of Keenan and Kel. No, oh. <laughs> no, no, Joe Rogan. It was Keenan and Kel. Uh, there was a dude on there, the character John Rogan. And I always thought it was a cool name, so I just stole it. <laughs> and I played there. I played there for a couple of years. I met, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of a character called Super Balls. No. Yeah, this was years and years ago. I, I played with him for a while. And then, uh, no, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to say he was a cheater. He was not. But I just noticed his RPs were getting better a couple of years later. And I said, and I said, hey, and I asked him if he's part of another Fed. And he said, yeah, he just didn't. He was just still in GWA just to keep talent there because a lot of talent was leaving because the uh, Fed head was getting bored with it. You can tell. Oh, so he, that's when he showed me XWF. And this was 2003. Is this and the XWF that's still around today? Yes, it is. That's awesome. Yeah. And this was what I was talking about a few weeks ago when you had said a, uh, yeah, that's what your home fed was. Yep. Yeah, this was that XWF uh, a guy named Jonathan Brown was the owner at the time, and that's where I met people like uh, Fuzz, yep, Centurion, and uh, people you probably never heard of, Steve Jason, Jim Williams. They're they were all uh, role playing back then, and uh, you know I showed up. I, I was like I said, I never got past the mid card. But I showed up and I stole another name, Paul Roach. <laughs> so it's literally a guy named Paul Roach. And I, I played with him for about three or four years. And uh, at this time, they had a mass, they had a show on Mondays called Massacre. Okay. And one on Thursdays called Anarchy. Well, Anarchy was the big show, you know, where the people who were really good at role playing. And okay. then. Massacre was the B show. Sure. People, yeah, people so, coming up, new guys, so on and so forth. Yeah. So I did pretty good on that. You know, and I won like their hard title, which I think is their second, their second uh, rated title right now. But I was winning that. And I won the extreme title and, and I played there until 2007. But then I, I tried to come up with a tag team. And this is where Jack Nation came in, my okay. first original name. There you go. <laughs> and, and, and I did this one night. I was 21. I was drinking. And this is a weird story because I had to pee. So I was thinking about John Norton. But then I thought about Jack Nation and what the crowd was going to chant because I was thinking about Chris Canyon. You know, he said, who's, who's better than Canyon? Who better than Canyon, yeah. 
everybody. <laughs> but my thing was Jack Nation was going to say, who holds the nation or something like that? And they were going to yell, you're a nation. Like, you're a nation. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that came because I had to pee. <laughs> you're a nation. Okay, I get it. I see what you did there. And that name stuck for years. <laughs> you know, I, I told you. And I wrestled with him. And that's about the time I met James Raven. He came in about 2007. Nice. And we played on a – then they had a C show called Impact. And yes, he was actually on a C show before. That kid who was like amazing. You know what I mean? We all gotta start somewhere, right? Yeah. But he held but he held back. And then he just started beating everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, I played up until about two thousand twelve. And then, you know, things happened and you know, you just don't have time anymore because by that time I was 30. No, what, what, I was 26 or 27 years old. You know, and things just kind of fizzled out. It seems like, yeah, most everybody at some point just takes an extended break from e-fitting. But then 2019, uh, yeah, 2019 came around. Unfortunately, th- things got a little... Uh, Harry. Yeah, I got, I got, I had more time on my hands. And, uh, the only fed I ever knew was XWF. So I went back and I screwed up there. See, I really, I didn't want to bring in Jack Nation because by that time, Jack Nation was, you know, in real time, he was about 36. You know what I mean? Yeah, past his prime. Yeah, nobody was going to know him. So I went ahead and uh, made a guy named John Lewis, and I used a Cain Velasquez pick base. Pick base, yeah. Well, what I intended to do, I wanted this Mexican aristocratic guy who just became evil. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, like, what if John Lewis isn't anything? So without telling anybody, I literally write an RP from a Police officer's point of view, you know, he showed up to the robbery and there was a dude deceased in a parking lot. It was John. <laughs> now this was, this was as I was, uh, I, you know, I was role playing for a match. So that's where Alejandro Rivera was born. And Alejandro Rivera ended up being a pick base of Alberto Del Rio. <laughs> you know, very smooth talker. But in the ring, he could just be cruel. Well, by that time, I realized that my RP skills, even though they were good enough to be uh, mid-carder on these B and C shows back in the day, nah, I was just losing. It's like I didn't create these characters to be jobbers, you know? Yeah. So I, I went and I talked to James Raven, and uh, that's when the uh, I asked him about any MMA fights he knows of. He showed me Union Grand Prix. I don't know if you ever heard of that dog. Yeah, I I used to follow him on Twitter at some point. Yeah, a guy named Dante Reed ran it. Well, he still runs it, I believe. But uh, James Raven, he had a team there called Highlight FC. And I went and I put my old (laughs) Jack Nation character in there. But that's only because he got revived. Uh Whenever I announced that Alejandro that I was going to leave the XWF Centurion, he realized by the way I was talking that I was somebody who was there before. And I told him who it, who I was, and he told me he goes he goes look you need to he said you need to retire not on a opening card on Saturday Night Savage I believe it was. So at a the first pay per view in 2019. It was Jack Nation versus Centurion with the guest referee, James Raven. <laughs> Obviously, my, my skills were never as good as that guy's. So he, he clobbered me. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, I, but I'll tell you, the, the fact that I got to face a guy who, back in the day, I really wanted to face him, that was that was just so special to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And. You know, that's one of my 
Uh, I lost that match, but it's one you, know, you remember. Not... It's something you hold hold in high regard. Yeah, and you know, I, I thanked the guy. He said, "Yeah, sure, no problem." You know, it probably didn't mean anything to him, but you know, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that guy was up there. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to. Anyway, I ended up in the Union Grand Prix. Man, I feel like I'm doing all the talking here. Did you? No, you're you're basically you know that's kind of how I go. How do you start an e fedding? Then I ask you know about your characters and your feds, and you're kind of running with the show, and uh, that's kind of what I, you know, is not a bad thing. So um, you're talking about Union Grand Prix, one that was on Twitter or is on Twitter. Are they still around today? Is that what you're saying? I believe so. Uh, the guy's a hard worker in real life. He he, he used to do these twelve hour days, and he tried to run the e-fed you know that's, that's hard work you know yeah. so he had to cut it down to one show a week but that's where i met a guy a lot of people like uh perry wallace he went by roscoe robinson and uh do you you know the the troll guy manny uh yeah he went by robert gulliman you can find you can find union on twitter at union underscore gp uh, check them out. They're they're actually a pretty cool fed, um, but that, that's where I met those guys at. And unfortunately, I've always been pretty good at creating characters. Like you know, you get those WWF games, the old ones, and the UFC games. Yeah. So I wanted to create these, you know, just the best characters I could with the parameters I was able to. And I didn't think about it. So you could do as many zeros as you wanted to, and you could take it up to 20. So I wanted this guy who was this badass brawling brawler, Iron Chin. <laughs> he literally had no submission skills, no ground and pound, no clinch striking, no takedowns. And that left it all in the 20s. You know, so this guy was just unbeatable. <laughs> and I, and I, you know, like, well, not unbeatable. Nobody's unbeatable in those Sims. I could, I can tell you that, but, uh, it was going to be hard to beat them. And then I, I just created a whole stable. That's where I started TW Combat Sports. You know, after Alejandro and Jack were in Highlight FC, you know, that's where Tommy Ward came in, a guy named Reggie Martin. Well, tell me about MMA e fetting. Let's talk about your team and what that means in relation to what is normally, you know, you handle a character. Now you're handling a gym or a team. Well, essentially what it was, uh, it started in union. You know, you want to be, you wanted to be a part of a team. It, it, It didn't give you any extra boost. It's just, you represent that team. So, uh, there is a team out there called real killers, MMA, a big team. And I wanted to try to get something to rival that. So I had uh, Tommy Ward. He was my first creation. And I said, you know what? This Rob Jones, I'm getting a lot of heat with him. And when I mean heat, I had, I had personal heat on. Wow. I had, uh, I had a lot of personal heat on Twitter with that guy because I wanted to just have a loud, brash 20 year old. I don't give a shit who you are. You know, I'll take you on. I'll challenge anybody. He was a troll. <laughs> and I, knew, I knew he was going to be good in that cage. So <laughs> Twitter at that time, I, I was very new to it. So I put in my phone number instead of my email. Ooh. So straight one. So that was Rob Jones. He spoke for everybody. Well, few people in the few people in the Fed didn't didn't like the fact that this new handler was coming up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Making a stand on Twitter, which that's understandable in some Feds. You know, as like I said, the, the one I, the only Fed I was really involved in for, you know, all those years was XWF, and that was on the o, on the OOC boards. Everybody was together, and I never really dealt with any other people. That's yeah. That back in the day, efeding was its own little circle. Each efed had its own little community, but that was it. There was no outside world. 
So I, I didn't really know the uh, etiquette. But as I played with, as I played, I continued to create characters. And uh, Union GP went to open up their Bantamweight division. And I pulled Rob Jones down to it. Well, I'm not going to name names, but a few people got pissed. And they basically won OOC on me, showing off my roster bio and things of that nature, saying I cheated, putting a fellow handler, you know, that we cheated. I, was, I said, I never cheated. They said, you God moded a character. No, I built the best character that I could within the perimeters. Yes. Yeah. You know, lo- looking, I should have been a little more, more fair about it and not taking advantage of the system. But still, I, I to this day, I said I did not cheat. You know what I mean? I just you, you didn't break made the rules. best case. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it, it was that etiquette right there. Yeah. So unfortunately, me and the uh, guy he uh, used to handle a guy named Level One back in the day in the EWC. You can find them on uh, EWC for Life dot com, and then his brown would say dot com dot com. <laughs> Uh, but he played back in the day. And so we were essentially blacklisted from Union Grand P, which was unfortunate. You know what I mean? Cause like, I, I like Dante, you know, I-, I always BS with Roscoe, you know, he helped me out, but then it all just seemed to go to shit whenever I, you know, whenever they word got around that apparently I was cheating, you know, oh, apparently, gotcha. I, apparently I knew something about the sim that they didn't. I couldn't get it through anybody's head that the only person who controls that sim is, you know, Dante Reed. So GCC came about, which is amazing. Have you ever watched one of the shows or checked it out? So I have checked it out once or twice, but it, it was in its early days. Oh, uh, well, what did it, with the application process, instead of choosing going skill to skill, you basically have uh, four options. Uh, it's striking, clinch, wrestling, and ground grappling. You have to go choose either, you know, you put them one through four. You know, first being world class, then you go great to decent to weak. And then throughout those categories, you have a few other categories. Like, for example... As a striker, you can either make him a boxer, kickboxer, or defensive striker. Okay. And the numbers are automatically generated. Now, here's the cool part. With, uh, you choose, like with the, with the, uh, reach, you choose whether, you know, below average, average, above average. And you, you choose just everything about your guy, how tall he is, what weight class he's in, you know, the picture, the bio. Yeah. And then you get 150 points for killer instinct and heart. You can do 75, 75, or you can go ahead and mess with them with the math. You can go heavy one way or the other if you want. Yeah. Are you, uh, I always, you know, I always try to put them around the same amount because, you know, you, you don't want anybody to be too aggressive or else, you know, they're going to get caught coming in. <laughs> but you don't want to let them have too little heart or else they're going to just never come back from beating, getting beat up. Uh, but then yeah, it's it's a really cool application process. And then in its early days, he created the teams. You know, I, I, me and uh, James Raven's team, Highlight FC, we were the first two in there. Nice. But what, what he and that was at the GCC Sweet 16, which was a shit show. I'm looking at their website right now. You guys can find it at globalcombatchamp.wixsite.com. And home. And you check you check out the go to Jim. Jim's got it there. No, you'll see. Uh, the list of the gyms with that number beside them, such as uh, TW Combat Sports is 79, I believe. Yes, sir. Number one. That, that's your that's your game planning stat for your entire gym. So my guys, and then uh, I don't know if you ever heard of a e-fetter called Graham Clawson. 
Yeah. Yeah, he, he goes by uh, Ken Felder in the GCC. Nice. He was in Russell UTA with me way back in the day. Yeah, he was telling me about this the other day. And then uh, I don't know if you see him on tw- on Discord. You got uh, Irish fella Libby. <laughs> I'll have to find him. Yeah, I haven't talked to him in some time. Yeah, he, he he's uh, he's part of the team too, and so is his wife uh, Elizabeth Devereaux, Coda Pathy. She's a Hall of Famer in some in some uh, feds actually. And then we then we got Pete. Pete uh, he handles a uh, Twitter named Jesse Roberts. But he's there as a uh, person named Jessica House, and that's what brings up TW Combat Sports right now. And every one of the, and every one of our wins and losses, they, along with the other teams, they go ahead and they control what your game planning stat is. So that that seventy nine will go up or down. This is pretty Just cool. Like, I'm checking it out, guys. If you want to know how it works, there's a whole page dedicated to it with how you choose your fighting style, how you role play, your camp reports and strats. There's a list of the gyms, the roster, and scouting on each uh, weight division. It's a pretty cool website, too. It really is. They they worked hard on it. So you're in GCC. You're having a great time. TW Combat Sports is, is running the show over there right now as far as uh, these rankings go, but... Oh, that's that's gonna change. You you see that Lone Wolf MMA coming up? Yeah, they're real close. I have uh, Alejandro Rivera still there. He was uh, during the heavyweight tournament. He was just supposed to be a filler, but that guy, he just dude, you you can watch him when he competes, and you get you get so excited, you know, because I'm like, <laughs> damn, he just head kicking everybody, and then I ha- I have him in the uh, camp reports. Because you have to post camp reports, uh, and you can be any skill level. If you want to just describe what your player is going to do in the cage, as long as you give it some effort, you're going to go ahead and be granted a camp report. Now you can get uh, with that one. I believe it's a fifty percent, a plus fifty in stamina, and a plus forty in consistency. And that's if you only write like two lines. You know, two lines of meaningful stuff. And then uh, there, we have some other people who go into a little more detail, <laughs> but unfortunately not not a lot. And they get, I believe, like a seventy and an eighty. That's eighty consistency, seventy stamina. And That's then crazy. you got the big detail guys. Yeah, and, and it's so it, it, when I say when I used to put it on show your stuff and say it's really not time consuming. I'll help you with anything you need. You know, it, it's more along the lines of just when you, when it comes on every other Friday night, you know, YouTube, man, it's just, you find yourself getting so excited because <laughs> this, this works, he works hard on the productions. Uh, I don't know if you ever watched one of his shows. Yeah, and I've watched uh, one or two early on on YouTube. All right. Well, over the years, I'm sorry, over the shows, because – we just finished, as of this recording, we just finished the 41st show, mm-hmm. and that was GCC 20. Now, uh, he, he has the crowd sounds. You know, it's the typical YouTube crowd sounds. But then, say, if somebody gets finished with a body kick, you literally heard the whack. It's like, oh. <laughs> or, very detailed and very involved as far as results. Yeah, or when somebody... Uh, comes close or gets a TKO or comes close or gets a submission. Hello, hello, hello. UWL. Yes, Jay Jefferson. Yeah, he's that's a good guy. I wanted guy. to I wanted to come into the angle feds. So I bought it that's when I bought in John Thompson. I've done a few good uh few good angles uh the guy who does nvr wrestling do you remember him nvr uh, is that um that's not i'm thinking mainstream um mainstream is rob daniels he's there too yeah i'm talking about a guy named billy danielson billy danielson yes very early guest on the show yeah number five actually yeah really good guy actually a really entertaining guy if i remember right <laughs> he's a pretty funny guy though uh he 
and I just got done with a feud, and I I told Jay that I needed to, I'm going to take some time off. So literally at the 528 UWL Saturday night, he just had John get his neck injured. That way I can take about six months off. <laughs> but that that's a great fed too. If you wanna if you have their URL, I'd I'd love to give yeah, him. Some. Let me give them a shout, uh, Jay Jefferson, on Twitter at UWL Online. Uh, the website is uwlonline44.boards.net. Jay Jefferson's a great fed head. Uh, I was with him under the Skyfire brand, and then uh, I think briefly in UWL. So check it out if you're into angle feds. Uh, UWL is a great one. Anyway, that, that about wraps it up. Like I said, I, I can get I can get into detail and just start yapping. That, that's my Pittsburgh side of me. That's all good, brother. I'm going to boo your Pittsburgh side, but uh, no, I appreciate your time, and we're going to hit some Twitter and Discord questions if you're ready for them. Oh, yeah. There's not too many, I don't think, but the ones that I did see were kind of interesting. <laughs> Let's see what we get. On Twitter, we got Dresden45. He wants to know if your XWF is XWF99.com. Yes, it is. <laughs> that guy... I, I actually, uh, when I went to XWF for the first time with Alejandro, I'm sorry, in 2019 with Alejandro, yes, I actually angled with him uh, to put him over because, <laughs> and I, I just remember that guy. He, he he's a pretty cool guy. He's he, and he, he always he's one of those guys. He'll, he'll crack you up unintentionally. <laughs> Well, there you go. He's asking you if you were ever there. <laughs> yeah, I, I was there, bud. All right. <laughs> Global Combat Championships at Global underscore champ on Twitter. Check them out. Thanos snaps, and you lose all your characters but one. Which character survives? Tough question. Yeah, I, you kind of get attached to some of them. Oh, for sure. I would, on, I would honestly say I, I have a girl out there, and I'm Juanita Sanchez. Pretty good wrestler. I, I'd probably keep her. There you go. Something a little, something different. Maybe not one of the characters people expected you to pick. No, nah, Rob Jones. He, he's. It'll be about a year, and he'll be done. He, he's he's already defended the lightweight title, lost it, and I'm just <laughs> looking to try to get it back from. On the Discord side of things, if I were a professional, I'd be more ready. Hold on one second. Well, that's what that's why we got uh, Brian as the editor. <laughs> Thank you, Brian, for coming through in the clutch. He probably he's probably gonna keep all of this in just because we said that. <laughs> all right, up first, it's Meg. I'm Meg. Damn it. Uh, what's your favorite thing about being part of EMMA? So hit us with EMMA. I assume is e fetting for MMA. Oh yeah, my favorite. My favorite part is the unpredictability of it all. Y- you could think, yeah, I'm gonna beat this guy. You know, there's no way I'm going to lose. And then you hear that, flack. <laughs> oh, KO, KO. It's like, how did I lose? And your heart just kind of breaks. But, you know, you, you just, it gets you enthusiastic about it. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, the uh, it's like reading results in the old EFA. It's just a different way to get your blood pumping. Oh, yeah. And you, you don't really get, like, some results you skim through, some, you know, I know you said it in GCWA. I said it sometimes I read them in blocks. Yeah. But this one, it's it just constantly on the screen. He makes the entertainment value good. So you just see the whole show. And and I, I just love the unpredictability of it. 100%. So Meg also wants to know, what's your favorite thing in the hobby? I, I just always loved, I, I always loved the hobby, whether it was angle fetting, I love promoting, you know, creating stories, role playing. It's just my competitive side. It's a good answer. I mean, and then you, the you, EMMA. You like, you like a lot about everything. Oh, yeah. There's, you know, it's, it's all your, you know, there's nothing you dislike. It's just, you know, you got your competitive side, you got your, creative side and then there you got your i don't really have to do much i just <laughs> coach a fighter and then i watch what happens side so what's your least favorite thing in the hobby people who take it too seriously it's, it, it's it, it, it really yeah it's like it's like guys would you get pissed off if you lost the game of checkers 
<laughs> I would. I would. Get out of here with your check okay, bullshit. Yeah. We, we kind of get mad, but still, w- would you go off on Twitter? This guy, this guy's a so-and-so, and I hate this mother... <laughs> you know what I mean? He kinged me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you understand what I mean. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous to get mad about a game. Yeah. Best advice to give someone coming up in the hobby? Don't take it personally. There you go. It, e- easy peasy, yeah. Enjoy yourself. Uh, don't don't hesitate asking for help. You know, you, you're always going to have that at least one person who's going to want to help you out. But don't expect to get that. Say if you have like feedback, you got to give the feedback. You got to do that to get that help. You got to you got to get earn respect first. You're 100 percent right. You got to give feedback to get feedback sometimes. Hmm. Don't be afraid to, yeah, reach out. That's a good, that's a good advice. From the Big Kahuna, I don't know who that guy is. Uh, he just some dickhead. <laughs> Biggest accomplishment in the hobby. What a great question. Very insightful. Biggest accomplishment in the hobby. Actually, that would be with Rob Jones when I won the GCC Lightweight Championship. I, I have YouTube. You know, a lot of people have YouTube on their TVs nowadays. Yeah, now you watch it at home at live anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> and I may have actually did my version of the uh, Chuck Liddell. <laughs> you remember Chuck Liddell? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, nice man. Of, I did my version. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that, that's one of my favorites. That's awesome. What about your biggest disappointment, man? This guy is bringing the heat with these questions. Yeah, he sounds just like John Thompson, don't he? <laughs> My big, biggest disappointment actually happened in XWF. Uh, it was in 2007, Jack Nation. I had gone through their very first Own the Pay-Per-View tournament, and I had beaten some good guys at the time. Uh, there was a guy called Dynamic Dynamite. Nice. You, you may have never, never heard of him. No. That guy was a legend in that circle. But... uh I, I had beaten him. I didn't expect to. And then there was a guy named Siren. Great writer. Horrible person. <laughs> he went ahead and did some kind of just shit role play. You know, and I kind of, I felt really disrespected. So I wrote the best thing I could possibly write, and I ended up beating him. But then here came... The tournament final was a guy named Big against Big Rig John Gambino. This dude, great writer, great person. His one bad habit, sandbagging. Oh, oh no. yeah. Well, I pulled one. I knew what he. I knew what his game was. So I pulled one over on him. I, I did something I don't like to do. I sandbagged the guy too. Yeah, don't give him any material. Well, as I'm looking. Uh, and I always tried to be unbiased as I was reading, but I read these role plays and I just smiled. I'm like, man, I just beat John Gambino. I just won this tournament. And I fully expected to win it. And you did not. And my heart just sunk. Oh, <laughs> so, man. That, that literally depressed me for, you know, about 10 minutes. And then I got over it. Cause like you said, <laughs> like you said, it's a game. But still, <laughs> you just, like man i just beat him i just won this thing with jack nation no i didn't <laughs> oh, yeah that's tough man yeah. last question from the big kahuna if you could relocate anywhere in the world where would you go you know what damn it this man has won me over cleveland rocks <laughs> going to cleveland I, now see now you're winning me over drew carey <laughs> You remember Drew Carey, 98 Royal Rumble. Huh? Oh, of course. Paid, tried to pay off Kane. <laughs> Amazing. Is Cleveland your legitimate answer? Nah, I'd, re- I'd go back home. I-, I lived down in Oklahoma for a while. Nice. Uh, right southeast Oklahoma, about 20 miles from the Texas border and about an hour and a half from uh, Fort Worth. You-, you heard Fort Worth from Tony. 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 Yeah, five A's, get it right. 
Yeah, I, I live down there, and that's where I'd go back if I could. But you know, I'm I'm here with my uh, with my maternal family. <laughs> well, there you go. Speaking of your maternal family, Tony wants to know: Is your mom hot? That was a terrible transition. <laughs> Actually, I I'll tell you a story about that one. Uh, Rick Diculous, I hadn't seen him in a while, but it was the first night you did the Top 100 Countdown. Yes. And we were shit-chatting in the room for a little bit before everybody came in, and my mom was sitting on the couch, and I and uh, he heard me talking to her. He goes, oh, the question, is your mom hot? And she goes, tell him yes. I said, mom, he's my age. So my mom would like to me to say yes. There you go. That's a great answer. <laughs> that's a good little background story. He got the treatment from Rick personally, and maybe that's why Rick didn't ask this week. That's what we're going to pretend. <laughs> and that brings us to Fuzz. Is she single? Yes, and I will not call you dad. <laughs> Jay knows the drill. I like it. <laughs> Fella Libby. Is that Graham Clawson? <laughs> no, that's... uh. That's the guy I was telling you about on there. Uh, I forget the names he gave me, but you can you can find him on Twitter at Irish Fellow Libby, or you can find him on the new efetter dot net uh, at e, at Owen O'Rourke E O I N. He is actually he has two uh, characters on TW Combat Sports. Nice. We just actually found out that we don't live too far away. He was bitching about his job. And uh he said, man, i got to get out of this freaking county. I said, where are you from? Westmoreland County in Pennsylvania. Really? <laughs> and then we found out he works for the same guy that I know. Oh, that's pretty like, sweet. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that guy's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Hope he doesn't listen to the EFED podcast. That's for sure. Oh, he don't know. Uh Owen does. Uh, Libby does, yeah. So he wants to know what brought you into EFET, and we kind of covered that early on the show, but uh, maybe a brief overview. When I looked online and I found that WWIWF, that's pretty much what got me started, and I was addicted from there. I mean, you were worldwide insane for e-wrestling. Yeah, no, I was there for about a month, but GWA, I was there for a few years, and then XWF, I was there for, what I say, nine, ten years. So why are you still doing it? Uh, I probably wouldn't be as a role player, but I, I'm big into the EMMA because, like I said, I, I get excited seeing the show, and of course you got your own character on there, which is pretty fun. And then... uh I take some time off from UWL, but I've always loved creating storylines. And that, that's why I'm still in the game. So what would make you start your own Fed? Yeah, I'd be glad to help anybody with their Fed as long as they're not <laughs> boost, but I would not start my own. At least it's not, at least you're being honest. What made you start your Fed, Mikey? I'm curious about that. 20 years as a handler and no experience as a fed head. I've enjoyed it from the handler side. I'm burnt out from the handler side. I still have the itch to do something, and I wanted to try it from the other side. Have you had your show first show yet? We just dropped it uh, this past Sunday. I can gladly say we had 100% participation in role plays. Uh, we have a 22-man roster without advertising the fed. It's been uh, it's been great. I'm very excited about the fed. And excited to get classic wrestling rolling. Oh yeah, give the UW, give the URL. So it's www.classic-wrestling.com. Dot com. <laughs> awesome. I'll check. I'll check it out. You said it's a 750 max uh, role play limit. That's right, 750 word role plays bi weekly. You're only gonna get booked maybe once a month. So figure one role play a month, maybe a segment if you're feeling. Yeah, I, I got to check that out, and I suggest everybody check it out, too, because, hey, you enjoy the E-Fed podcast. I'm sure you'll enjoy Classic Wrestling. That's right, Classic-Wrestling.com. Dot com. <laughs> you made it from the 80s, right? That's right? It's similar. We'll get there. Check it out. All right, I'll do that. All right. Up next is Ron Hall McDonald Hall. It's Highlander 4-H. Favorite, favorite opponent in the hobby. <laughs> 
Uh, James Raven. Yeah, right. That dude always beat me up. I don't even have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually a handler. I mentioned him earlier. He used to handle level one in EWC. Uh, he's famous, not famous. He's more, you know what? I'm, people know him as Misty the Means right now. Oh, okay. We have a lot of characters, and I love facing off with that guy because it's such a just talking shit on Twitter. And and I used to also like facing with the real killers MMA. Uh, I don't know what you would know her as. I know her as Giz from Real Killers MMA. Not sure. I used to like uh, facing off with her characters as well. So who's someone that you would like to work with but have not yet? In UWL, when I get back to it, I really want to work, try to work with uh, Rob Daniels. He has a lot of experience, you know, running a Fed, and, and I know him and I could create a beautiful storyline together. There you go. That's so, a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Favorite match all time in the hobby? <laughs> uh, wrestling in the MMA? Yeah, absolutely. My favorite match was obviously the Centurion match. You know, it just felt like a big thing. You know, the legend James Raven, the legend, you know, they're all in the Hall of Legends. And then there was me. You know, that, that was one of my favorite wrestling matches because, like I said, it was special to me. It meant a lot, yeah, as far as your career goes. Yeah. And it, it was it was a nice ending to that era of XWF in me. And then for my favorite MMA, <laughs> it had to be the second match. Uh, there's a guy called the New Perfection, Jay Aguero. I don't know what his wrestling, his e wrestling handle is. But he's actually a friend of Steven, the dude who runs uh, We Are Splat and uh, the creator of eFetter.net. Yes. I, I, I really liked competing with him. Let's plug eFetter.net real quick. If you'd like to get a social media account that is strictly for eFetting, check out eFetter.net. New and improved. And you don't have to have an actual email. Just don't forget your password. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. What else we got here? Today, favorite hobby outside the hobby. Nice. Ah. Uh, Killjoy, Killjoy Ito wants to guess that it's streaking. <laughs> Killjoy, I wonder if that's the same guy who was in XWF years ago. That dude always cracked me up. Ah, uh, oh, well, one of my favorite hobbies. Uh, I, I like watching. Obviously, I like watching the fights. I love watching wrestling. You know, other than that, I don't have too many hobbies. Are you a big, you're a big UFC guy outside of uh, wrestling? Well, yeah. And speaking of my ma, hey ma, there was a guy on here on the <laughs> Fed podcast. His name is Sean Worstein. He wants to know: Are you single? Yes. And. There's another guy who said, is your mom hot? Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is Miss Williams. There you have it. <laughs> I love it. The special appearance. Swerve, run in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. She just came in. You love to see it. Hey, Jay, this was so much fun, buddy. It was. Uh, we covered your e-wrestling career. Uh, briefly, and we hit on all of these fun questions from our crowd. I appreciate people coming with the fun. Jay, we're going to hit you again sometime, and we're going to talk about EMMA, and we're going to talk about uh, more of this weird stuff that I'm not used to yet. The GCCs, check out GCC at globalcombatchamp.wixsite.com. They're also on Twitter, twitter.com slash global underscore champ. Also, on the YouTubes, that channel has too many letters in it. Just search Global Combat Championships. <laughs> I We would greatly appreciate it. I'm sure they would, too. It's a great fed. Check out UWL and Jay Jefferson over at UWL44online.boards.net. Uh, check out Jay online on Twitter. Hit us with a Twitter, Jay. You can hit me up at TW Combat. 
or you can go on efetter.com and hit me up at warmachine98. Efetter.net. Or Alpantera. There you have it. Jay, this is so much fun. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Really appreciate your time and looking forward to talking to you again. Uh, you too, buddy. Thank you so much. All right, guys, what a fun interview with John Thompson. Tom Johnson, if you're asking Brian. Tom Johnson. John Thompson, talking about EMMA, the evolution of the uh, the change in Emma. the game. But not, not Emma. I liked Emma. Not only from e-wrestling, but he's now doing the e-mixed martial arts and talking about camps and talking about all kinds of fun stuff. It's interesting how it works. It's different from what we do every day, Brian. Another notch in the multifaceted world of the hobby, uh, E MMA, Emma. It's true, Brian. We cover everything. We try to get the entire E Fed world stuff. I didn't even know about when we started this project. It's been a lot of fun just learning about other avenues this game can take. Guys, I want to thank our sponsors. I want to thank Defiance. I want to thank Classic Dash Wrestling. I want to thank. OCW Fed. I want to thank Alex Smiley for supporting the show. I want to thank each and every one of our patrons over at patreon.com slash EFED podcast. We're having a lot of fun over there. We're going to do some little extra bonus events here very shortly and uh, sign up if you want to check it out. I mean, we've got ad free episodes, we've got early episodes, we've got uh, video interviews, and all kinds of extra bonuses. We're giving it all we got, Captain. We're giving it all she's got. Okay. <laughs> Guys, thanks for joining us for episode 74. Tune in next week for our interview with George of the Egg Bandits. It's going to be a blast. For Brian, I'm Mikey. This is the EFED podcast where the wrestling is written, but the characters, the characters are, are real. Real, real. Commercial free on Patreon.